Hello, high school hockey fans. It's time for this week in Wisconsin prep hockey. As you know me, I'm Mike Hammett, along with our usual panel, Bill Berg, Bill Berg Jr., and Del Scanlon, along for the ride tonight as we get this uh, season rolling here. And uh, by the looks of games, it looks like burglars. We got some games going already that are uh, pretty interesting. Yes, we do. And it, it, it's unusual for Monday night games. Well, the girls have had some for a while. The boys just started recently playing on Monday night. But one game in particular caught my eye tonight. Superior, uh, the Superior girls team is playing Rock Ridge, the Rock Ridge Wolverines, up in the Eveleth Hippodrome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the lovely Mrs. Burglar, uh, wife of Burglar and mother of Webb Jr. is from Eveleth, Minnesota, born and raised. And the thought of, uh, oh, Rock Ridge is uh, a newly formed team, merger of Eveleth and Virginia. Um, and the thought of uh, girls from Virginia using the home dressing room at the Hippodrome just curled her hair it just, she was not happy it just she died a little bit inside uh girls from virginia using the whole you know, playing you know under the same banner as as, as uh, both. these are bitter rivals um back when uh when when uh bill's brother bob was still in high school um uh ba harrington john harrington played on the 1980 miracle olympic team uh, he was a, he was a guest at uh, the high school banquet, and he's from Virginia, Minnesota, and and you know Mary went up to she introduced he was you know speaking, went to introduce herself she put her hand down and said hi I'm Mary you know, I'm from Eveleth and as his hand was going out as soon as she said Eveleth his hand snapped back you know <laughs> Eveleth and Virginia they do not shake hands um, so them playing together she it, it does not sit well with her um, but anyway. Big rivals? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, she could tell you stories. Okay. She was afraid to go to Eveleth, Virginia high school hockey games. Because you, there you, you like, get beat up afterwards. There was, yeah, there was like fights and stuff, which was, you know, back in the day. And you now, now they're one school district and they have to pretend to like each other. Yes, and Eveleth was the Golden Bears. <laughs> And when you went to a game in Virginia, they had all these teddy bears. They had these sticks with teddy bears hanging from nooses that they would just swing. <laughs> back and forth. Um, there were the oh the the, <laughs> the Hanson brothers of Slapshot fame. Uh, a couple of those were act. Two of those were actually brothers from uh, Virginia, and she remembers a, a game where you know one of them got hit in the face with an egg in Evelyn. Um, oh boy on the ice so yeah and anyway, here I'm, good luck superior <laughs> and here i am thinking yes virginia there is a santa claus <laughs> what a well when i when i hear rock ridge i think a whole lot of lines that i can't say because they're from the movie um, blazing saddles oh come on G give us what you can say no but the people of the land you know, no, I'm not saying I'm not quoting anything <laughs> from Blazing Saddles. <laughs> All right, we can move on. I just had to get that in. So what before they uh, merged, what was Virginia? You said um, Eveleth was the Golden Bears. They're the What's Blue that? Devils. They were the Blue Devils. So if they merged, they could have been in the Golden Devils. Well, they're, they're the Rockridge Wolverines. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, well, and this yeah. is, you know, just it's kind of an interesting situation, too. This isn't a co-op of two schools playing sports together. The school districts merged. It's one school district now. Um, you know, it would be like if Janesville and Beloit decided they were going to be one school district now. Um, they're bitter rivals. I think they do everything they could to make sure they weren't going to merge, but you know that's i see where you're going with the conversation but yeah 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 all right um let's get 
you know, let's get away from that stuff. Um, we don't have a guest tonight. That's a that's a crying shame, but we'll we'll get one next time. We promise. You got to bear with us uh, for this. To be week. fair, we didn't really ask anybody either. Well, no, and we we we've kept the slot open for uh, Lavar Ridgeway, uh, the the hockey director from the WIAA. Um, Ridgeway, I don't think he's from Rock Ridge, but anyway, he's he will join us at some point in the future um, after he's been to a couple of hockey games and is a little more familiar with the lay of the land. He said he will let us know when he's ready. Is he going to name a set of him being the uh, point person? He should name a commissioner of the WIAA boys hockey and girls hockey. Somebody who could go out and uh, promote it. Somebody, somebody like a Gary Bettman. Somebody MJ's could... throwing his hat in the ring. That'd be fun. What would you change? Well, you can't change a lot. I mean, hockey is governed by the NFHS rule book. No games later than 7.30. <laughs> On a school night. Anyway, moving along. You got okay. a game recap for us. Game recap. Earlier this uh, back on Saturday, I had the opportunity of up close and personal getting to see Janesville and Middleton play. And these two teams got rivalry way back. These two teams really go at it good. And each takes the best of the other. And this one was decided in the last under two minutes. And Janesville got a 6-4 win over Middleton. Back and forth game, Middleton led 2-1 to one after one. Janesville comes in early second, scores. And both teams score again in the period 3-3. Three, three. Janesville scores early in the third. Middleton comes back on a power play. They score 4-4. Four, four. Well, finally, with about minute 58 left in the game, Janesville was able to get one in the back of the net. Uh, Middleton goes ahead and pulls their goalie, and uh, the proverbial empty net goal happened, and it was a 6-4 game. Really, really an entertaining game, guys. Uh, both teams went at it pretty hard, and uh, you know I, I see a lot of Janesville, obviously, but uh, Middleton, what I did see, it's I think they're going to be a pretty good team this year. Uh, they're going to get their share of wins, no doubt about it. They've got some uh, pretty talented kids on that roster, so uh, what came away very impressed with both teams. Um, Middleton, uh, I'm going to see more of them during the year, no doubt about that. I will uh, make sure that I get to see them again, but uh, they left me uh, very impressed. They they have a nice squad this year, so somebody to watch out for in the Big Eight. And uh, but on that day, Janesville was able to protect the home ice and get a six-four win in that game. You know, I was surprised. Um, we'll get to the top sixes later. Janesville actually got votes this week. Um, I didn't expect that, considering um, they haven't had a winning season in any of the last four seasons. I don't know if that was Mason's influence or what. Um, <laughs> but you know, they won. They won five games last year and eight the year before. And now, um, early on in the season, they've already got um, some some top six votes. Uh, so it looks like things are turning around there in, in Janesville. Well, Junior, it's like like we say about high school hockey. You get a class that comes through that's pretty good, and all of a sudden it changes your fortunes. Well, this this class that they have coming through now is in the junior class where all the talent is. And uh, they've only got one senior, and he's like a second or third pair of defense. You know, and everybody else, everybody else is uh, juniors or sophomores. So, uh, very could, young group, but they're coming they along. Could, they could potentially match last year's win total by Thursday. They could. Last year they got off to that horrible start, but they played a very difficult schedule. <laughs> if I remember correctly, what they lose their first nine, something like that. It was, it was bad. But boy, they they played anybody last year. No, oh, but. You know, like I've said a million times, I give Coach Marman credit for uh, putting together a schedule with the way that, uh, you know, we had COVID uh, going through the state and affecting high school hockey. But he was able to get their amount of games in. And, you know, we they played some teams that were they were probably in over their head against. But, you know, they played them. And, uh, you know, you kind of get better when you're playing better talent. 
your talent has to rise up to that talent. And like I said, this junior class is a lot of fun to watch. Say uh, a very good bunch of forwards. So uh, we'll see how far they go. Um, you said votes. Now, I don't know if they're a top, top six team, maybe, maybe an honorable mention or so, but um, I don't think they're top six yet. I feel like I should be holding that sign saying, prove me wrong. But anyways, since nobody wants to prove me wrong, uh, games of the week coming up. Um, Dell, you're going to go and see USM and the Cap City Cougars, right? Actually, I oh. went and saw the USM at Cap City Cougars this past Friday night for our, oh, our, okay. our game of the week. Okay. And this it was a very good game. Uh, Cap City jumped out to an early lead, uh, scoring in the first period. They scored at 642 and 10 seconds later scored again to go up two to nothing. Late in the first, USM came back and scored. Had a 2-1 game at the end of one. At the end of two, it was all tied up at two as USM scored on a power play. And then in the third period, uh, USM player proved why you fight for the puck in the corner. She came out of the corner with the puck, come across the front of the net, took the shot, and scored the game-winning goal. Uh, early in the uh, third period. Uh, so USM came out with a three to two win, but a game that, you know, wasn't decided until the final buzzer. And so, you know, our game of the week, the winner went to the USM Wildcats over the Cap City Cougars. And with that, I'll toss it over to Burglar for the boys game of the week. Thanks, Dell. Bill and I went down to KB Willard Arena in Stevens Point to watch the visiting Notre Dame Academy Stri Tritons take on uh, the Spash Panthers. And uh, to say the Tritons got off to a hot start would be a bit of an understatement. I think their first two shots on goal both went, well, now two of their first three went in. There was an initial save on the first one, but the uh, the goaltender could not handle uh, the rebound, and after a brief battle in front of the net, uh, it got poked in. Um, and then the next shot, uh, less or just over a minute later, the next shot that that Notre Dame took also went in. So just uh, a little over two minutes into the game, they were already up two to nothing, and that prompted uh, the Spash coach, uh, uh, Mr. Bussey, uh, to change his goaltender. And he put in the six foot six, uh, junior Jonathan Nafe. That's it, junior Jonathan Nafe. He took over, um, and he kept uh, Notre Dame off the board uh, for the rest of that period. But still, Notre Dame pretty much dominated that period. Um, actually, they 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 dominated each period, out shooting uh, Spash for the game 43 to 14. Um, they just, they, they, they're they fast. They, they like to set up behind the net. Um, they, they've got a nice mix of, of upperclassmen and underclassmen. They've got a, they, they, they have a freshman uh, starting on their top defensive pair. Uh, Nathan Ante is, is paired with uh, Michael McKinty, who I believe is a, a team Wisconsin. Uh, defenseman and those two make up to their top defensive pair. So, I mean, a freshman seeing significant ice time, you know, on, on a team, uh, the caliber of Notre Dame, you got to figure we'll hear more um, about Nathan Ante in, in the future. And of course, the, the guys you expected to see out there, um, you know, running things for Notre Dame, Brendan Gruber and Hunter Bill, um, they're all over the ice. Um, every time you look up, you know, the, the, they're, Gruber especially, every time we looked up there, there's 27 with the puck, you know, doing something. Um, they, they were, they were, they're fast. Uh, but the only drawback Notre Dame may have is they're not very big. Um, I, I can see a team, I don't know why, but I, I always think that Hudson is big. Hudson always seems to have big They guys. look big in those uniforms. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you see a team that can kind of come close to them in speed, but has some size. I can see them trying to new, kind of neutralizing them. 
Um, but they were, they were just, yeah, they were, they were too much for, for the Smash Panthers on Saturday and game got a little chippy towards the end. Um, there weren't a whole lot of penalties, like said, until the end, there were, there were like, like five in the third period, you know, there were only three in the couple of periods before that, but a little frustration on Stevens points part and a little, we're not going to take that from you on Notre Dame's part, but, uh. A fun game to watch. It was, you know, they, it, they, they kept it close. So it was fairly interesting, but Notre Dame was pretty much in control fr from the start. Uh, Spash has their own freshman first liner this year too. Um, the returning points leader from last year, Cade Smigaj, um, he had 50 points last year. I believe he's a junior now. Yeah, he centers their first line, I believe. Uh, on his wing was Jackson Schrader, um, I believe he plays for the TWU 16 team. Uh, he's a freshman this year. Um, he was great. Uh, he did a, a fantastic job of creating space. Um, he stick handles really well. He skates really well. He's fast. Um, he made a lot of space for himself. Unfortunately for him, um, he'd make that space and get a shot off. And he, he, he was addicted to trying to put the puck through the goalie's logo. Um, which is the hardest place to score. But uh, I was really impressed uh, in, the, in the freshman forward. Um, if he can find that, that touch to miss the goalie, um, you know, we might have another spash forward making a uh, name for himself. I was really impressed. So you're saying he suffers from goalie chestitis? He did in that game, at least. Um, but, you know, it was one game and against a, uh, what was mostly a superior foe. So, you know, those things can happen. All right, guys. Um, anything else about that? We were ready to uh, proceed. Oh, we can move on. Okay. Wyndham Garden of Madison and Fitchburg, the players of the week. Um, Make sure you get those in before Monday night, uh, especially before 7, so we can get all them counted and stuff. We had a lot of votes this week. Um, on the boys' side, we had uh, Jake Schaffner of Janesville. Um, Tuesday, he had a big game against um, the East Side Lakers, um, five Gs and five As. Uh, Thursday against Madison West, three Gs and four As. And Saturday in that Middleton game, he had a hand in all six goals, uh, two goals, four assists uh, in that 6-4 win against Middleton, which really was another one of those games for the ages that those two teams play. So Jake Schaffner was nominated, and he wins the uh, Boys Player of the Week. The Girls Player of the Week is on Alaska's Kaya Bronston. Kaya had four goals in a 6 nothing win over Winona, Minnesota. Um. She played a very good, strong D in a 3-2 loss to the Central Wisconsin Storm. And Saturday, one goal, one assist, 7 nothing win over Lakeshore. So Kaya Bronston is our girls. Wyndham Garden, Madison, Fitchburg player of the week. And, and that, go that, ahead, Del. That loss uh, to the Central Wisconsin Storm, that was one where they took the Storm to overtime. Yeah. And everything, you know, so I, I mean, I have had the pleasure of watching Kaya play over the last few years and she's always been one that's been aggressive on the ice, but you know, be, I burglar, this is one of your things that you love to see because we never give the defensemen all the credit that they need deserve because they're not in the score column that often. I, I don't know if, if, if she's a defenseman. I think they have her listed as a forward, but her, her job in that game, I think her job was to probably to shut down um, Sam, uh, what's her name? Sammy Federici? Yeah, Sammy Federici. Her, her, I, I imagine her role in that game was to shadow and shut down Sammy Federici. Um, and they held Central Wisconsin to two goals in, in regulation. And uh, from what we've seen of Central Wisconsin, uh, they generally score a whole lot more than that. You're on mute. 
Am I on, I'm on mute? Oh, the, me. I was on mute. Oh, yeah, they scored mute. eight against Pines, five against Hayward, and four against USM. So scoring two against regu and regulation against Don Alaska is quite an accomplishment for the Hilltoppers. Well, Bill Jr., as long as you have the floor, people don't want to hear any more. They want to hear about those top sixes. And uh, do they though? We had a lot of we had a lot of coaches voting this week. It's always good when they vote because they see the teams, you know, more than we get to. And uh, uh, I know wow. how you like to crunch the numbers, and you crunch the numbers, and we got what? Well, we have Hudson as a unanimous uh, top pick in Division One. Um, Hudson at number one, unanimous. Uh, Nina was, was is that, second. Yes. Was every ballot or every email was it Hudson number one? Yes. That's what I, unanimous I thought so. means. Unanimous. unanimous. Yeah. Uh, Nina is second. Notre Dame is third. Eau Claire Memorial is fourth. Madison Edgewood is fifth, and Verona is sixth. Uh, I kind of like that layout because you have Hudson and Eau Claire Memorial representing the western side of the state, Notre Dame and Nina representing the eastern side of the state, and Edgewood and Verona representing the southern side of the state. Um, and then everybody in the farther northern part of the state is uh, Division II. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a nice breakdown of the, the D1. Uh, for Division II, uh, number one overall is St. Mary Springs, although they did not have the most first place votes. Uh, Oregon is second, Rice Lake is third, Homestead is fourth, Amory is fifth, and New Richmond is sixth. Uh, Springs, Oregon, Rice Lake, and Homestead all had first place votes this week. Um, so that was a lot. Springs was the only one of those teams that appeared on every ballot, though, and that's what pushed them over on the point total into number one. Uh, for the girls, uh, number one is the Madison Springs Metro Springs Oregon Lakes. last year faced each other in the sectional final. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, number one in the girls is the Madison Metro Lynx. Two is the Central Wisconsin Storm. Three is the Bay Area Ice Bears. Four is the Fox City Stars. Five is the Western Wisconsin Stars. And six is the Hudson Raiders. Uh, all six of those teams received at least one first place vote this week. Uh, Junior, one of the things we may want to point out is this is just the first poll of the season so far. This is um, the first poll of the season. Teams, you know, there's going to be a lot of movement around. You can, you can uh, one pretty of much the, bet on that. One of the boys coaches uh, specifically said, um, not from the that side of the state, um, but from elsewhere, said specifically that Hudson is better than everybody else. And then two through seven on the boys side, it's mm. kind of like throw a name in the hat and any one of those teams can beat any one of those other teams on any given night. And then, you know, eighth, eighth and down, it sort of drops off. But Hudson is clearly the number one team in the state in that coach's eyes. I, th I think that would that would uh, follow along with MJ's thing where, you know, you just take a sign, you know, Hudson is the best team in the state. Prove me wrong. You know, uh, but I, I, I can't see anybody doing that. Um, and I think St. Mary Springs um, got a lot of votes because, well, the previous two seasons that they've had um, where they basically dominated Division Two. It is not the same St. Mary Springs this team this year. Um, they are scoring. Well, they're not scoring. Uh, <laughs> uh, in, in their two games, they've scored three goals so far. So, yeah, it's not the same uh, St. Mary Springs that, that we're used to seeing. Um, so I think they, you know, got a lot of votes because of who they have been. Um, we'll see what, what, what the, the next couple of weeks bring. Um, yeah, yeah, still a good um, team, um, just not the powerhouse, not the dominating division two team that they had been. How two to I one mean, win, two to one win over Bayport, who got uh, votes uh, for the boys' division one bracket. Uh, two to one lost Arrowhead. Um, their next uh, several several games. Wapan is a conference opponent. Chippewa Falls, everybody knows them. Uh, Appleton United, uh, Fond du Lac, and then Oregon. Um, so them in Oregon, I mean, it could be if, if the poll doesn't change much between, you know, now and the 18th, it could be one versus two, uh, a nice mid-December battle. Sounds like was, a game of the week candidate. Who was the, uh, what's the name of the goalie there for Fond du Lac Springs? I know he was an underclassman last year and he was he pretty was good too. last year. 
Hayden Rising. Hayden Rising. Yeah. I didn't even have to look that one up. I just remembered it. Yeah. He 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 has to earn his pay this year. Well, he's got yeah. a 939 through two games. That's pretty yeah. good. Well, he's earning it. <laughs> <laughs> Brady Welsh and uh those guys uh, don't have the puck at the other end of the ice for him, so he may see a few more this year. Uh so that's our D2, our D1, and our girls look at the polls. Like I said, this is just first week. I mean, the thing is, is we're, we're doing this, but we're doing this sometimes on what? Teams play what? One, two, three, four games? I mean, there's it's just a, you know, kind of toss in the air except for Hudson. Yeah, I mean, the Hudson girls have only played one game so far. They came in at sixth. They still got a first place vote, so somebody's very confident in that team. It was not from the Hudson coaching staff that they got the first place vote either. Um, I've never seen that, uh, whether it's top sixes or back when we did the top tens, I've never seen six teams get first place votes in one of our polls. Uh, but all six girls teams in the top six got at least one first place vote. What do we got coming up for uh, game of the week, guys? Looks like Friday, uh, Metro Lynx and the Badger Lightning going to meet up. Delia, yeah. gathering, you're going to go to that? Yep, I'm going to be at that game. Uh, the that'll be the Metro Lynx's first game of the week. Um, and so they're sitting there right now with a six and zero record. Uh, Badger lightning are currently three and one. Uh, they do play the cap city Cougars in between there. Uh, actually playing cap city tonight, uh, down at uh, ice pond in Wanakee. Uh, you know, the, the other thing that, you know, we want to keep in mind is, uh, still going to be interesting to see what effect COVID is going to have on games this year. Uh, the Northern Edge are actually playing their first game of the season tomorrow night because their first four games of the season were canceled due to COVID with the players. So, uh, yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to the game of the week over at uh, the Badger Lightning's home rink. I know I'm going to freeze to death in there, uh, but that's the way it goes. We're at a hockey rink. And I'll toss it over to uh, Burglar. Are you going to talk about the boys' game, upcoming game of the week? Sure, I can do that. Um, two weeks ago, we had Shano uh, as our Shano East Merrill Union as our game of the week, uh, primarily because Shano was returning to uh, varsity hockey action for the first time in 10 years. Um, tomorrow, uh, down in Stevens Point, we are going to welcome back Stevens Point Pacelli. Uh, who has been missing from high school hockey for the last two seasons. And they are back now with the team. Um, so we are going to watch uh, Tomahawk and Stevens Point Pacelli play at the Ice Hawks Arena down in Stevens Point. Then. And uh, Stevens uh, Pacelli coming back and Shauna coming in. A um, couple of schools added to the mix. Uh, helped to jumble up the, the division uh uh, the division breakdown this year. You know, the 32 smallest schools are Division Two. Uh, Pacelli jumps in there um, and then kind of throws everything up. So those teams that were the smallest, some of those teams that were the smallest schools in Division One or the biggest schools in Division Two, uh, there was some shakeup there. Uh, Bill knows more about that. Yep, Superior is Division One this year, uh, joining the sectional of death. <laughs> uh, with Hudson, the Eau Claire schools, Chippewa Falls, Wausau West, um, Bash, well, I believe Rapids is in there. It's you almost like, ought to give the state championship to whoever comes out of that one. Wow. Well, I mean, whoever comes out of that sectional will have earned their trip to state. You aren't uh, that's for certain. Mm. Um, and then uh, Homestead, I believe they got shifted down to Division Two last year after some teams um, – dropped WIA hockey uh, due to the, all the COVID protocols and stuff. So they played division two last year. They're, they're still division two this year. Uh, they had been division one, the, the first time we went through this whole experiment and then some teams moving around uh, here and there. So I had to, yeah, I updated yesterday. I updated seven of the eight sections uh, to make sure everything's right. So if you look, if you just click on the boys link on the top of our page, um, all eight sections should be accurate to the WIAA now. Um, 
at least one of those co-ops down in the southwestern part of the state changed the host school this year so i had to figure out who they were again um uh, muskego i don't remember oh, which yeah. co-op that used like every couple of years that one changed the host school changes and it throws me for a loop i think that was the west bend ice forest in the past like yeah, you got a yeah, yeah. They, they, I think they were New Berlin Greendale. last year. Greendale, they were Gre yeah, Greendale because West Bend got been their New own Berlin. Team. Oh, okay, yeah, they've been Greendale. They've been New Berlin. Um, like they like I I'm generally against you know coming up with the whole like we call the Central Wisconsin the Storm the Central Wisconsin Storm not the DC Everest Co-op but this 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 co-op needs a, a name. Not the Muskego Co-op Ice Force. They need to apparently, be. Apparently, no. Apparently, they are following WIAA guidelines because that's what the WIA likes to call them. That's what they used to like to hang their banners up there. You know, they are the Muskego yeah. Co-op. You know, Central Wisconsin the DC Everest Co-op. Let's. You know, see when I first saw here. that one. <laughs> when I first saw that one, I thought we got a third new team this year to go along with Pacelli and Shano. I'm like, oh, we got another one, but we did not. It was just somebody changing their, the, the host school. And, yeah. And as it goes for sectionals, I did update the girls sectionals to be the way that the WIA has them. And I go, there's an interesting setup to them. I go, used to seeing on Alaska down around sectional three and then moved over to sectional two now. And uh, most of the big rivers conference is sitting in sectional two instead of sectional one. It's uh, and what was sectional two is almost like sectional one now. So, <laughs> yeah, like they flipped the map on sections one and two. And, stuff, and so. they changed things around like Hayward is with Central Wisconsin Storm now and like the, uh, Superior is there. So I don't know. I got I should put this all on a map so I can see what it looks like. But it's very different on the girls side than it has been. Yeah. It's going to make for an interesting season and we're only starting. Well, I think I think what happened is the storm paid somebody to get the Fox City Stars the hell out of their section. <laughs> and they're I, back I, rumor because they're back section, they're back over against the Lake Michigan teams again. Yeah, they're, they're down at number four now again, aren't they? Yeah, guys, I want to give a little bit of a shout out to uh, southeastern team, uh, the Homestead Highlanders. As I look here, they're off to a five and zero start. Scoring six goals per game, allowing 1.6 per game. Power play is, well, it's at 57%. Penalty kill at 91%. So the Highlanders off to a good start, and they're going to face USM tomorrow night. Um, at uh, Ozaki, it looks like, will be the location. But um, Homestead, a team that we hadn't been hearing much about the last couple of years, um, maybe a little bit under the radar, but this year off to a very good start. Uh, got a score in Rocco Cicerello. Rocco has 18 points on the season and their net miner, Connor O'Brien's coming in with a 940 save percentage. So pretty good points there for uh, Rocco and uh, save percentage pretty good as well. And Homestead uh, looking to have a solid squad this year. And uh, that's a big rivalry between them and university school. Uh, it's kind of a whole same neighborhood around in that area, but uh, that should be a good game tomorrow night, USM against Homestead. And I know uh, probably Ozaki rink's probably going to be pretty full for that one. Yeah, I, I don't know how Live Barn or those other streaming things are doing this year, but I got to say it's it's good to be able to go back to games. Um Bill and I've been to well a couple of games already this year, and it's it's it, it's good to be back. Yeah, three games already. It's 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 good to be back at hockey games. Um, it reminds me of why why we do this uh, every year. It's like because we, we like high school hockey, and I I I like watching high school hockey games. Um, it's been fun. Kind of missed that last. Did, didn't realize how much I missed that last year, not being able to go to games. Because last year, last year was just like everything else. You, you couldn't do anything. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, being able to go back to high school hockey games again is great. Actually, tomorrow night I'm going to be headed up to the RWD game here in town, but it's not actually to cover the game. I'm going up there to watch youth night. 
for the simple reason that the, they're bringing the mites on the ice oh, during, the, during the Mar Nights game. So, uh, and since so your grandson's playing mite hockey this year, and so you get to, it's kind of like starting all over, getting to watch him play again. And you know, I, I always like watching the kids play because, you know, th- watching them play and and that having fun and it not being, you know, the pressure of, of scores being up there and stuff, watching them just having the fun on the ice is, is very interesting to me. Such the purest form, Dell. I mean, they're, they're little kids and they go out there and they just go and have fun. And, you know, you didn't, you wouldn't even have to put a score up and those kids would still have fun. Well, I, I remember my oldest boy, he's 32 years old now. He's actually overseas in Saudi Arabia, but uh, when he played for his might hockey playing for uh, Moston, they were playing a tournament over in uh, West Salem. And he was one of the slower skaters on the thing, but saw one of the uh, players from the opposing team fall down. And he's sitting there looking, checking to make sure the kid's okay, trying to get the coach's attention to come check on the kid. He was, <laughs> more, he was more worried about that than where, he, what the, where the puck was on the ice and stuff. So When I was a mite, I played in a tournament against Thunder Bay, Canada, and it was a traumatic experience. <laughs> <laughs> How bad was the score? Uh, we played him twice. I think it was 19 in one and 21 in the other. We didn't score. Oh, I was I imagine they had pretty good regroups and all that, and oh, uh, okay, ran um, their own systems and things like yeah, that. Yeah, th- th- this was the um, this was a tournament in Hudson. This was back, you know, before Hudson was his dominant, but the Hudson was still good back then. A youth tournament, in Hudson, and the season before, um, Thunder Bay had sent down their B team to that tournament, and they didn't they didn't win. So this year they sent out that the, the Bills time they sent on their A team, and I was I was well yeah I, I was a coach. Uh, I was a mite, so this was like, how like eight years old, so like eighty nine. Yeah, so yeah, like you know thirty some years ago. Um, but yeah, you know, when when you know the coach were you know they have a meeting of the coach and the coach okay so this is USA high so there's like no checking and no slap shots right. Because that was unusual for mites in Canada to not have checking and slap shots. Um, and there was, I still remember, I, I, this, this was, yeah, 32 years ago. And I still remember it clearly. A shot from the defenseman on the left side towards the net. Um, the forward standing, facing, stand, facing the defenseman as the shot's taken, it was, I don't know, six, eight inches off the the defense, the, the, the forward standing in front, jumps up, spreads his leg, puts his stick down there at the proper angle to tip the puck over Are you a goalie's kidding me? shoulder. Are this you kidding eight me? Eight years old. Facing the defense with a slap oh my shot, God. jumps up, puts his stick down, and deflects it perfectly into the corner. Oh, my yeah. goodness. It was, yeah, it was Junior, a, I'd be scarred a little bit, too. It was supposed to have been an eight-team tournament. Only six teams ended up there. So rather than have by, they made us play the first team. You had to play them two games. Uh, yeah, two, two games total score. So yeah, they beat us like nineteen to nothing. We got to go back and play them again the next day. Nineteen wasn't enough. They got twenty-one the second time. They got twenty-one. Yeah. I think we got a couple of shots on goal. Basically, dump ins from the blue dump ins. Wow. You know, everybody's got a few of those uh, youth hockey stories of tournaments that uh, tournaments gone wrong. And I know I've got my share. And I know, Dell, you've probably seen a few well, also. I, I was coaching a tournament up at, in Altoona and uh, had a team from Austin. Well, our might team actually included a lot of our learn to play we did, you know you didn't have learned to play at that point in time and so you know our mites were eight seven six five four you know we had four-year-olds on the team even and oh, i think we were playing lakeland and their coach was generous to the point that um when they did build up to a du- double 
a double digit lead. He went and made them play, play four corners. Remember uh, old Dean Smith's North Carolina four corner offense. That's what this coach was able to do with, I hate that. with that puck. And I go, you know, he was trying to be nice and, but you know, he making sure the kids made so many passes before they could even attempt a shot on, on and, and everything. But you know, that, yeah, that I, was I hate frustrating it. for the kids. It's a, that, yeah, it's kind of, well, and it's, it's tough, especially like youth hockey. It's not like you're skating most of the time, a 20 man high school team roster where you can just, you know, keep throwing the third and fourth line out there because the game's blow it or whatever. But I hate the passing drill. Being on the other end of the passing drill is just horrible. Just score. It's easier. <laughs> you were on the other end of those passing drills. I have quite been. often. Yeah. <laughs> well, they mean well. I don't. I don't, or, or I don't understand. Do? I don't understand what Anago hockey was because for years Anago hockey, you know, youth hockey, we'd get spanked by Wassa and Spash, and then we get to high school and we're playing competitive hockey with Wassa and Spash. And it's not just my my age group, but Bob's age group. The, the before my age, like that was happening too, and I, I don't understand how that happens. I, I can remember going up to Marinette for a tournament, you know, in that um, shell or whatever you want to call it. The bubble know, dome? The bubble dome, yep. And I love that place. I, I think it's only up there once. Uh, I've coached in the uh, Eagle Rivers Dome, and I go, that that was fun. But I, I go, there's been quite a few rinks that I've enjoyed going to. and there, I can't really say I've, I hate going to any rink. Any, any rink I've been to, I've, I've always been able to take a positive out of it, even when I froze to death in it. Mm. Yeah, I, well, part, I, part I know. Of the, part of the thing, Bill, part of the thing is why, you know, we got spanked at the youth levels and did better. At the high, well, I mean, part of it was coaching. Um, but part of it, too, was that we didn't have enough players at any one age group, you know, and your youth level is only two years. When you get to high school, you got four years. So you only need a couple, you know, you got, you got more players to draw from. If you have a couple, a couple of good players at each, at, in, in each class, you can, you can round up a, a, a competitive team. Uh, but when you've only got, and like, yeah. So and, their size they, advantage, their, their numbers advantage is sort of negated. Yes. So you'd have a lot of kids that would like double roster. No, no, but like in youth, you know, you're you're a squirt, you but nine and ten. But yeah. in high school, you're there for four years. Yeah, right. and like in like in right. squirts, you know, like we we only had like you know five good squirt players. We had like five good peewee players. We get to high school, that's ten good players. That's two lines. Well, yes, it is. And, yeah. and then you guys probably at the same time only had like one might team, one squirt team, where you had everybody on it. Whereas you get over to Wausau and stuff and, the, you know, they had their A, A squirt team, their B squirt team, and probably even a C squirt team half the time. And so, yeah. So. And especially, you know, in Anago now, I think they've only got one team at any level, but like my age level, there was two peewee teams, but at my brother's, there was only one squirt team, I believe. Um, when Burglar and I coached peewees, there was two peewee teams, but I think there was only one squirt team behind us. We get that lucky down here sometimes where we'll get three teams, you know, and you'll get to Bantams and you'll just kids, it kids fall off. They don't, they don't want to play anymore. Whatever the case may be, you get to Bantams and you got about 17, 18 kids. I mean, it's, it's just the lay of the land sometimes. You know, um, but anyways, yeah. Tournaments, you know, with we all enjoyed them. We all have a story from them. And, uh, I'll, the only I'll, one I'll, give, I'll give you one more tournament story. Um, then I, then the, I'll the, give mine. The, the, first, the first year of the Northern Edge. Um, uh, right, it, was, it was just Rhinelander and Anigo at that time. And we had one coach from Rhinelander. The head coach was from Rhinelander. I was the assistant coach uh, from Anigo. Um, Wisconsin Prep Hockey's favorite official um, was on that team. She was a sophomore. Um, she wasn't happy to be on that team. She had thought that she was going to be playing on the boys uh, team because there wasn't a girls team. And the, the, this team was formed at the last minute. 
Um, but we, we managed to get into a tournament over in um, Austin, Minnesota, a holiday tournament. Um, and, and yeah, w w one game, uh, we were, we were, we were, we were kind of outclassed. Um, and there were, there were, there were some players on the other team who were kind of showboating a little bit. Um, one, at one point we were actually on a, on a power play and, and a girl from the other team was just being a hot dog and like skating loops around our zone, just, you know, killing the penalty all by herself. Um, Nikki kind of got tired of that. And when she tried going behind the net, uh, Nikki sent her into the boards hard. Uh, she get a penalty. She didn't get to play the next game. <laughs> <laughs> she had she had to sit up the rest of that game and the next game. But uh, yeah, don't 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 try to showboat uh, when Nikki is feeling frustrated and is on the ice. <laughs> and, uh Andrew, when he was a uh, Bantam, they uh, all the planets aligned and they got to go to state. State was in Green Bay at, at Cornerstone, and the morning of state, it was just a snowing coming down. And uh, you know, we we knew that you know our chances were going to be, eh, you know, probably not too good there. But uh, New Richmond was a big favorite going into that, and New Richmond, if I remember correctly was the first game of the day and the goalie, his parents got lost in the snow and they missed the first period. The team, I don't remember the team they played. It was like I said, so long ago, but the other team was up five to nothing by the time the kid got there and they ended up losing the game six to five. So Ooh, one of the tough. favorite one of the favorites was over in the losers bracket. Now we we won our game and we ended up uh, we ended up getting third that year. Uh, beat uh, third place game. Beat Winter Club in overtime. So yep, that's my story. Well, MJ, as you're getting ready to go to your the final thoughts, I'll give you mine. Go Navy. Beat Army. I think I'm all final thought it out. Are you guys? Yeah, I'm good. I'm hey, good. Hey, listeners, have you got any? Uh, you got any good uh, tournament stories? Send them. Send them to. Send them to us. I'd, I'd like to read them. Or just um, put them. Put them. Put them in the comments down down below. Yeah, you could do that too. Uh, that would be great because I'm sure everybody's got that one story about that one group of parents or that one kid during a tournament. So. Uh, Guys, I guess we'll go ahead and put a bow on it and call it done. Uh, so for uh, Dell, Mr. Berg, the other Mr. Berg, I'm Mike Hammett. See you next week on This Week in Wisconsin Prep Hockey.